Hello Animos fans and welcome to another episode of Analysis. Today we're looking at one of the biggest things in Animorphs. It is thought speak. And why is it one of the biggest things? Well, it's one of the most iconic things in Animorphs. So if you're reading Animorphs, you'll see the little, I forget what they're called, greater than, less than symbols, which I had never seen used in such a way before in books. I don't think it's been used in such a way since, except in fan fiction, of course. But that iconography, sort of put on that logo there, yeah, that's thought speak. And it is, as we'll find out, the first alien thing that happens in Animorphs. Please come out. We won't hurt you. I know. I froze. Okay, I definitely heard someone say, I know, only there hadn't been any sound. I mean, I heard it, but I didn't really hear it. Maybe this was all a dream. I looked kind of sideways at Cassie. She looked back at me. Our eyes met. She had heard it too. I looked at Rachel. She was turning her head back and forth, like she was looking for where the sound, that wasn't a sound, could have come from. Did everyone hear that? Tobias whispered. We all nodded at once, very slowly. It is our first exposure to the Andalites. And from that point on, the entire Yurk invasion and everything that goes on, those words, I know, in those little triangle symbol things. That's, what, that's probably what I thought of them as a kid. I don't know if... I think I read Animorphs before I did, we, we found out in maths class what the greater than, less than symbol meant. So it's just, I don't even remember what it felt like as a kid to me. But anyway, what is thought speak? Much as though we can say, oh, Animorphs, you know, thought speak, Animorphs, the triangle things. What actually is thought speak? That's what we're looking at today in analysis. And first and foremost, so far as the series is concerned, it is the Andalite means of communication. He's an Andalite, and Andalites don't have mouths. They do thought speak. It's like telepathy. He communicates by thought speech. It's the same way we communicate when we're morphed. For us humans, it only works when we're morphed. For Andalites, it's the normal way to communicate. So Andalites use thought speak. Thought speech, thought speak. And as you may know, if you've read Animorphs, the Animorphs are able to use thought speak themselves, but only when they're in Morph. Now we have to remember that the morphing technology is an Andalite technology. So connect points A to B. Obviously, when the Andalites created the morphing technology, they incorporated the ability to thought speak into it. Hence why, as normal humans, the Animorphs can't use thought speak. But when they actually use the Andalite morphing power, they are suddenly able to use it. But before we go too much further into uh, thought speak in the modern times, let's just have a quick brief look at the history of thought speak and what it is beneath the surface. We find out our first bit of information in that regard from the Elmist Chronicles. I could sense quite clearly their emotional states. It wasn't just the body language. They seemed capable of projecting a sort of basic emotional language by some means I could not discern. I'm not an enemy, I said. I said it without thinking, automatically accessing my communications system. A system that was part of my body, no part of this form. And yet I saw a subtle relaxation on the part of the creatures. They had heard me, or had, or had at least heard the emotional tone. So that part becomes obviously very late in the series in terms of when it was written. The Elmist has found the prehistoric Andalites. So before they were big into technology, basically like us when we were Homo habilis or something along those lines. And they're communicating via mostly body language, but he finds as well that they're able to almost telepathically communicate their emotional states. They don't communicate with words. Like they're not sending words through to other people. It's in the form, it's in a different form. And let's clarify that with a couple more quotes. Freeze, horse boy, this bizarre creature said, making the sounds with its mouth. 
Of course, at that point, all I heard was gibberish. The translator chip, which all members of the Andalite military have implanted in their heads, requires a few minutes to begin to understand new languages. Some languages, it never does get right. Fortunately, almost all species can understand our thought speak, since it works at a level beyond mere words. I am Jagil Hulan. Not enough for the universal translators, one of the strangers said. We need more words before it can begin to translate. Got it, one of the others says. Translation is effective at 64%. Coming online now. We can understand you now, Aldria said. I understand you. Yes, that's because ThoughtSpeak works with universal symbols as well as with specific words, an older stranger said. So it says that it works at a level beyond mere words, but then in the Hort Bajir Chronicles it says it does use specific words, but it that's almost like a supplement to this idea of universal symbols, which could you could probably say is the emotional state that we discuss in the Elemis Chronicles. So put these little clues together, and what do we have? Well, let's throw another little potential clue in there. So if we're talking emotional states, and Animorphs distinguishes sentient from non-sentient races, is that talking on an emotional level? Are non-sentient races not able to, com to put forward complex emotions? Let's look at this quote and throw that into the mix. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Crow, Tobias said in a mock threat. Obviously, the Crow did not understand thought speak. Isn't that strange, eh? So, it uses universal symbols supplemented by specific wordage. But animals cannot understand it, or at least the, at least the animals believe that this Crow does not understand that. We, let's just go on with on face value say that yes the animals are correct in, in their assertion that the crow would not understand thought speak considering thought speak is based on a universal uh, symbology based at least prehistorically on emotional states so this all sort of you know the puzzle piece is sort of a line there basically what I'm thinking it's saying is that thought speak is a transmission of pure emotion. But as we'll get into later on, that can be expressed in a very individual way. It's going to get very confusing and I think by the end of this video we'll have, we'll bring it all together again. So at the moment, let's just say it's transmitting emotional states that almost become put into a symbolic language form that they do supplement with words. That's why with, in the Hort Bajir Chronicles, Dak Hami and Jagul Halan are able to understand the Andalites before the Andalites can understand them. Because they, their thought speak is more an emotional language than a, a written language sort of thing. And so the Hort Bajir instantly understands they have that emotional connection. Okay. And just to add on to that, the, uh, this, this is an interesting quote. Although my full name is easily pronounced in Andalite thought speak, it is somewhat long and complex for primitive human mouth sounds. Strange bit there. So an Andalite's name is easily pronounced in thought speech, but not by the human tongue. What do we take from that? Again, it could come down to... Uh, are, Andalites named by emotional state? Possibly. I mean, if you look at the early Andalites in the Elmis Chronicles, their names aren't actually Escrutistil. It's tree or leaf. You know, primitive Andalites probably have very, very... They're probably sentient, but their emotions are a bit more basic than mo more modern advanced Andalites. So, yeah, their emotional states are probably more basic and that translates to thought speaks and more basic names. Who knows? But before we crack on, let's discuss... Let, let's do uh, uh, trial by error. I think that's the word. What isn't thought speech? 
Because there's a couple of occasions where something is said by some character or alien or whatever, and it's described as like Fort Speak, but not. Uh, elimination by error. No, that's... Yeah, but... Freaking trial by error. Freaking trial by combat. Is that like freaking Game of Thrones I've gone into there? Whatever. A process of elimination time. Right, let's just go with that. What? Humility from an Andalite? The voice came from everywhere at once. And from nowhere. It wasn't a voice. Not really. It wasn't even thought speak. It was like an idea that simply popped into your head. The words exploded like bursting balloons inside your own thoughts. And then I heard a rasping, rumbling, almost belching voice. An alien voice speaking an alien language. But I understood it. I felt it in my mind. It was like thought speak, only this was deeper, more profound. The voice seemed to use my own words in my own brain. So those are two examples of a speech that's mentioned as being similar to thought speech, but not. One, the Elmist, in the way that he speaks. And two, the Lyrans, which is very interesting. So they are, they're basically, a, they read minds, these creatures, so they, they somehow have this connection to other people's brains. So I can see why that would be different to thought speak, where you almost transmit signals of your emotional states that gets turned into, uh, translated in other people's brains into thought speak. Whereas the Lyrans, probably delve into your brain from a distance and force the brain to think those words that the, I, that and then it identifies it as the leer and saying it the elemist though the words just pop into your head probably a very similar thing to how the leerans do it so that we're distinguishing here that thought speak isn't your brain coming up with those words and we're also saying it's not like the elemist one where it just pops into your head like you just know that's what it's saying it's more how do you describe it? So it almost describes the Elmist's speech as bang, the whole of his statement has just appeared in your head. Like you don't even need to, there's no time. It's just like, it's instantly communicated the entirety of what he's saying. It's instantly communicated into your brain. Whereas thought speak is like I'm speaking to you now. You know, it requires time. I need to get from point A of the sentence to point B, the end. I need to tell you in a linear sequence of words and etc. So that's just going over what thought speak isn't. So now that we've covered all that stuff, what does thought speech sound like? Because surely it must sound of something. I mean, it technically wouldn't be a sound, but when you think things in your head, do you give your thoughts a voice? Does your thought, do your thoughts have a voice? I think mine do. It's hard to say. Um, but let's see what the animals describes this sensation of hearing thought speech is like. Firstly, volume. Can you control the volume of thought speech? Apparently, yes. I guess I had been thought speaking a little loudly. Elfango was worried that War Prince Nerefer might have overheard. But I was sure I hadn't been that loud. I mean, I really didn't think that. Old Hoof and Tail, eh? Captain Nerefer said. Pretty clear there that. Thought speak has loudness, so sort of how I'm louder now and quieter now. There's that distinction with thought speak as well, that somehow, like, you can just change the volume, your, how you amplify your thought speak from your head. Does thought speech contain tone? So if I were to speak to you in a very happy, lovely, cheerful sort of way, you could say that that's a tone, or if I could talk in a very monotonous, miserable, depressing way, that's another type of tone. Is thought speak like robotic, where it's got no tone at all, it's just monotonous, like a robot, or is there tone? Can you tell by the way someone thought speaks to you, whether they're happy or sad or whatever? Answer, yes. Let's take a look at a couple of quotes just to clarify that. Right then, it hit me from the tone of Jake's thought speak voice. Even in thought speak, I could hear the tension in his voice. And if you can make out tone from somebody's voice, like you so clearly can in this series, those are only two quotes of many I could have picked out, by the way, showing that they can express tone in thought speak. Can you express 
other things in thought speak, like laughter, or screaming, or gasping? Well, the answer is, again, yes. Cassie started giggling. Well, thought speak giggling. And pretty soon all of us, except Axe, were laughing silently. I mean, how clear do you want it? it even gives it a name, thought speak giggling. <laughs> so they just, <laughs> if you find something funny, then you're able to thought speak it. Okay, fair enough. Now the last big question on how it sounds is does every voice have an individuality to it and can it be recognised from somebody else? By that I mean if I had the power of thought speaking and somebody was stood here and I thought spoke to them, would it sound like me, my voice? Uh, answer, yes, yes it does. Mum. I yelled in private thought speak. Her jabbering stopped abruptly. She had heard my thought speak. My mother was still alive enough to know my voice. And this is pretty clear throughout the rest of the series as well that people are able to pick out thought speak by who's saying them by the sound of their voice. So you can't like, I can't like give myself a Piers Brosnan freaking sounding voice in my thought speak. I sound like me in my thought speak. And you sound like you in your thought speak. Assuming, obviously, it was real and we had it. Um, I don't know how that works precisely, but that's the way it is. Um, so let's look now at the usefulness of thought speak. Why is it useful for the animals to have? So they've got this hand like technology, the morphing power, and they're able to morph. What advantages does it come with? Well, firstly, you can choose who you thought speak to. It can be open or closed thought speak. So let's have a look at a couple of quotes regarding that. There are two kinds of thought speech, open and closed. Open thought speech can be heard by anyone. Closed thought speak is like a human whispering to only one person. The visa gave his orders in open thought speak so that everyone heard. Thought speak is like email. It only goes to the person you address it to. Jake? Cassie whispered to me in thought speak so that no one else could hear. Something, something just grabbed me, I said, aiming my thought speak at Jake and Axe only. Rachel let out a small roar. I'm sick and tired of this are we doing the right things self-doubt crap, she announced in thought speak that everyone but Taylor could hear. In semi-private thought speak, Axe let Jake know our position. So there's a few quotes there just to elucidate the point, to make it absolutely clear the extent on which this works. So it's described multiple times as being like email. And if you've used email systems, you know that you can address it to a single person. You can address it to two or three people. You can address it to many people. The one difference there is that you can address it to everyone that with that Quote from book 43, you can address it to everyone except a single person. So like Rachel said this thing in thought speak, but she managed to exclude Taylor from that thought speak. So it's terribly useful in that regard. You can either broadcast it openly like Visa 3 so often does, or you can talk to a single person. You could talk to just two people, as many as you want out of a certain group, obviously within a certain range as we will get on to. And then one time, so I think it's just the one time. In book 40, it's given a name, semi-private thought speak, when you speak to some individuals, but not all. Semi-private thought speak. But of course, the way that thought speak works, it's not like every thought goes out there. You have to direct your thoughts. How exactly psychologically that works? Can he hear our thoughts? Cassie whispered. He cannot hear your thoughts, the Andalite said, unless you are morphed and you direct them to him. You hear his thoughts because he is broadcasting them for all to hear. This is a great victory for him, so he wants all to hear. So any given thought won't go into other people's head. You have to think about somebody whilst saying the thought in your head, which I don't know what your minds are like, but that would probably get very muddled if it was real, because the brain doesn't necessarily think in a very linear fashion it does like multiple things all the time so you could be i could be like looking at sean ashmore who's currently behind the camera and thinking to myself 
Sean, the toaster is on fire. But I don't need to. I can't. Don't need to look at him. I'm sort of picturing his face. But I'm also like my brain is think like because my eyes are open. It's like so, sort of also thinking about what I'm seeing in front of me here. So how it works? It's, it's science fiction. So <laughs> I don't think we're ever going to get a decent explanation of how it works, like on a m minute level. Uh, God, I love sci-fi though because it allows you to do that, and just people are just like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's bad writing or anything. I like the idea of thought speak. It just wouldn't work in the real world. In the sci-fi world, absolutely fine. Love it. But yeah, th there's that. Let's now just go over a few more of the positive traits, the usefulness of thought speak. Obviously, when the animals are far apart in morph, they can talk to each other much more clearly. We flew, not side by side, because that would have looked suspicious. Hawks and eagles don't exactly fly in formation like geese. We kept a hundred yards apart, but with our incredible vision and thought speak, we might as well have been next to each other. The thing is about this one, book 40 comes along and just changes everything. Book 39 and 40, I don't know what was happening during that period, but it's just like they decided, fuck law, <laughs> just fuck it all. Because in book 39, we ruined the Escafil device back there. And in this one, we just completely flipped thought speech on its head. So all this time, and we'll get into it, it's based on distance. So the further away you are, the harder it is to hear. So it's like shouting somebody. You know, the further away you are, no matter who you are, it's going to be harder and harder to hear. But then Gafinilan and Myrtle come along and we get this spiel. Myrtle and I have been the closest of friends since our childhood, he said finally. Unless we are on different planets, we can hear each other's thoughts speak. Not perfectly. Often exact words are not clear. But the sound of Myrtle's voice is always with me. It helps me to know he is alive. So what? Rachel said. Bird morphs cover every inch of town until we get close enough to Myrtle for Gefinnel and to hear specifics. Hope Myrtle has been able at least to get a glimpse out of the window or something. Yeah, so this bit is just confusing and I'm tempted to just say it's non-canon and the ghost writer was having a bit of a, a, a weird one. So after just establishing all we have in the previous 39 books, Gefinnelan and Myrtle now, or Gefinnelan, comes along and says, unless we're on different planets, I can hear him at all times. Also, let's, uh, we need to fly around the city so I can hear him, you know, get close enough to him to hear him. Freaking Gefinnelan, freaking weirdo. Um, yeah, so apparently, because they've known each other for longer, it's easier for them to hear each other? Consider, but up to this point, it was basically depending on distance. It doesn't matter how much you know each other. It doesn't affect how clearly you hear each other. So yeah, it's it's very weird. Quite frankly, I'm going to count this as just the ghostwriter having a weird one. I don't think how long somebody's known each other is able to somehow amplify, amplify thought, speak. So fuck off Gefinlan and Myrtle. Gefinlan specifically, Myrtle, you're all right. But speaking of thought speak distance, and I don't believe this is, I don't believe this is, don't believe this is contradicted anywhere else. It can travel through space, unlike spoken English or spoken word in general. Obviously spoken French can go through space, but English can't. Fucking come on, Adam. All four fighters were lost. We pulled back. But just before I did, before I could, I heard him, Prince Aximili, the captain. Not by link, but through normal thought speak. Very weak, far away. And one more way it's useful if you're in Hawk Bajir Morph, hey Lila, or in Cat Morph, and you can't speak very well, then it allows you to speak clearer than you would with, with the mouth that you currently have. Lead the way, Jake said, obviously preferring to use thought speak rather than struggle with a difficult Hawk Bajir diction. So now let's get on to, finally, and we've referred to it enough, the limitations of thought speak, starting with, of course, distance. So thought speak, unless you're Gefinilan, is affected by distance from the person you're thought speaking to. Let's give you now a few quotes just to give you the range of explanations and curiosities about this. 
You're such a freaking distraction, aren't you, Lila? Thought speak is like regular speech. It gets harder to hear the farther you are away. No answer. I didn't really expect one. Thought speak is sort of like a radio signal, and the hawk was too far away to get decent reception. Hey guys, can you hear me? It's Tobias. Just barely, but I can still understand you, I called back. Thought speak gets weaker over distances. Same as regular speech, although walls and so on aren't a problem. I followed Chapman as he headed down the hallway. Either he didn't notice me, or else he didn't care. He opened a door that let loose a flood of smells, dampness, mildew, bugs. Rachel, how are you doing in there? I jerked in surprise, a very uncat-like movement. It was Tobias. He had to be fairly close to me to be able to hear his thought speech. He must be on the roof or perched on a nearby tree branch. Yeah, I'm going down. I waited. He said nothing. Tobias? I called. But there was no answer. We're still learning about thought speech. We know there are limits on how far it can be heard, but we aren't sure what the limits are. The basement had panelling all around. So we get a, a few bits there. But we don't get much more clarification than that throughout the series. There are a few bits where they talk about distance, but no, like, distance is really given. So we can't, we haven't really got a range of, okay, so they could hear each other from that, from the length of a hangar away or whatever. So it's largely up to speculation. But in book two, of course, there, we're in Chapman's house. And she's surprised that she can still hear Tobias. We've also had the previous quote where they say they're a hundred feet apart in bird of prey morphs, but they can still hear each other, which is longer, further distance than Chapman's house. And then in that last Chapman quote, she goes down into the basement and suddenly she's no longer able to hear Tobias and she mentions there being panelling all around. And then on top of that, we get another quote which says that thought speech isn't affected by walls or obstacles in the way. So I don't even think the series is that clear on what it wants here. Obviously, very clearly, and I should go Finlan, it's affected by distance, but whether certain types of panelling get in the way and, and affect how far it can travel, I don't think we can be too clear, even though it is stated it's not affected by walls and that. I, I think there's a chance that it is and the animals are just mistaken. Because remember, that's early on in the series as well before they know too much. I think Axe is there at that point. I think it's the capture, so yeah, Axe would be there, but they haven't known him that long, and he hasn't talked much, because obviously, not until book eight that we get that little lesson for Axe. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say, but certainly, 100 feet, we can say, according to that quote earlier, they can hear each other quite clearly at 100 feet, given that there's nothing between them. Then obviously, Chapman's house, it's not going to be 100 feet long, I'm assuming, <laughs> unless he's got a freaking mansion. And they can hear each other through the walls and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, just that's largely up to speculation, that part of it. Another apparent problem with thought speak is direction. Now, there are some times in the animal series where it seems that the animals are tell the direction somebody is in from their thought speak, but we do get this specific quote from the book which seems pretty clear on the topic. I can see them, Cassie said. She and Marco had joined up with us. They had both morphed the same osprey. It was hard to tell them apart because you can't really tell where thought speech comes from. Of course, that's in The Visitor very early on in the series and some things do get changed later down the line, but I don't think there's anything concrete to counter this statement that you can hear thought speak and who's saying it and whatnot, but you can't tell which direction they're saying it from. Okay? Because it just goes into your head. It's not going through your ear. Because we tell direction because we've got two ears. And so it's like with two eyes, you get depth perception. So if you've got one eye, you don't have depth perception. With two, you do. It's like ears. You get noise perception. <laughs> Or, or, or direction perception. Right, and uh, another one. Thought speech is like spoken voice in that if there's lots of voices going on, it becomes a bit of a jumble. And the Andalites on battle bridges on board their ships 
have their ways to deal with this. Warriors working on the battle bridge often used hand signals between themselves so that the thought speech noise wouldn't become a jumble. So they, use, they still use those hand signals things that they did back in the old days, back in, when they were primitive Andalites, according to the Elamist Chronicles. Uh, one last thing, when an Anamorph is morphing, it's almost as if the ability to morph is turned on like a switch. It doesn't come in gradually. It, one minute you're speaking with your voice, and then the next minute, bang, they're able to use thought speak. Although sometimes there's the problem of they use the they lose their mouth and their ability to speak, but thought speech hasn't kicked in yet. Let's just throw in a couple of quotes about that. I started to say, yes, I know, but it came out roar, roar, roar. I was already too changed to make normal human speech. I thought my answers instead. Yes, I know, Cassie. Don't worry. But I was not morphed enough to use thought speak, and my mouth was no longer fully human. The groaning sounds I made would mean nothing to Rachel. So yeah, it's like a f switch gets flicked, and suddenly you're able to use thought speak, but sometimes your mouth goes before you're able to do that, so you have that moment of, can't say anything to anyone, in mid-morph. Okay, so I think we've gone over the fundamentals of thought speech, how it works, where it came from, how it's utilized, the pros, the cons. One, oh, there's two more things I want to discuss. The first one being how it's become incorporated with technology. Usually Andalites have managed to incorporate thought speak with technology. There are some exceptions and we'll go into those. But firstly, let's look at how, how they've done this. They've managed to come up with technologies that allow them to transmit their thought speech further than normal distance would allow. So onboard ships, like we have on like naval ships, you have speaker systems. The Andalites have basically the same thing, but for thought speech. How? Don't know. Sci-fi. Don't need to answer. I was getting ready to say something really crushing to Arbron, but just then an announcement. It was a direct beamed thought speak summons. Aris, Athangor, and Arbron to the battle bridge. It says direct beamed. I'm pretty certain that's meant to say it only went to those two, not anybody else. So it's a bit more advanced than our speaker systems. More like our email, but over a speaker system, basically. So yeah, they've, they've managed to incorporate thought speech to their computers and, and all that sort of stuff in order to transmit it over further distances. Where's the first time we really come into contact in this? Where is it first majorly important? When they rescued Axe. I passed out, and then I had the dream again. Only this time, I could hear an actual voice. Or at least, I heard thought speech. Me too, Tobias confirmed. Okay, now this is getting weird, Rachel said. Because at the same time, I thought I kind of felt something. Yeah, Jake agreed. Marco nodded. I know this sounds crazy, but... But it's like someone is sending out a distress signal. Like they're calling for help. You called me, I said. We've come to help you. Called? You heard my call? I was standing on a vast open plain that was a piece of my own planet, a blue-green park hidden deep beneath an alien sea. And there I waited for weeks. I sent out thought speak cries to my brother. I knew he would save me, if he still lived. But in the end, it was not Alfangor who found me. It was five creatures from the planet, five humans, as they call themselves. So Axe is sending out, clearly somehow transmitted thought speech to his brother. Unless we go back a little bit and talk about Gefinilan again. Because he said, because Myrtle and I have known each other for so long, we can speak to each other from other ends of the planet if we wanted to. Unless we're talking that, and Alfangor is doing a similar thing but towards his brother, I don't think that's the case, because then why would the Anmorphs hear it? Because they don't know him. They certainly don't know him on a personal level like Gavinland did Myrtle. So once again, just scrapping that idea. I think there's probably some sort of technology on the dome part of the dome ship that allows them to communicate through broader thought speak, like they're able to transmit thought speak outwards, which is why Visser 3 and the Anamorphs are able to hear it. 
why exactly they hear it and the general population maybe don't. I mean, maybe they do. Maybe it just wasn't put through in the books. That's like, oh, there's ghost stories about this disembodied voice somewhere, whatever. We don't know. But I think that on board this dome, Axe had a way to transmit signals further afield than he would with normal thought speak. And we know that Andalites have that technology. We know that they developed it pretty early on, thanks to the Yellow Mist Chronicles. Once we evolved to form families, we began to study science and nature. And again, over millions of years, we learned to build things. You know, weapons and vehicles that let us fly over the land. And communicators for extending the reach of thought speak. So they're able to use technology to boost their thought speak outwards, and they've done so for quite a long time, which probably explains how Axe did the thing from the dope ship. Let's now look at computers in general with ThoughtSpeak, because the Andalites seem to connect lots of different things to ThoughtSpeak. So I'm going to give you a number of quotes now, just giving you ideas of the types of technology that they've developed incorporating ThoughtSpeak. This is my Hirak de l'Est, my final statement. I have formed the mental link to the ThoughtSpeak transponder in my fighter's computer. I will record my memories before the Yerks annihilate all trace of me. I fought to get back on my feet and to the controls. I renewed my thought speak link to the computer. Boost the compensators! I went over to something I recognised, an Andalite computer panel. Computer on, I said. Identify user, the computer's thought speak voice requested. Alaran Semitor Karas, I said. Thought speak identification confirmed. Ready, the computer said. Since humans had no awareness of zero space, they did not understand that a powerful radio receiver could be tuned in such a way as to create a Z-space vacuum and open a cross-dimensional gateway. Once I'd opened a small hole in Z-space, it was child's play to use the same receivers to modulate and reflect the background radiation into a coherent signal. The hard part would be using thought speech to control the signal. That would take absolute concentration. The thousands of lines of computer language disappeared from the computer's screen. The screen went blank. I focused my mind as sharply as I could. I pictured the coherent signal. I pictured that beam going through my own head. Andalite home, I thought. Andalite home. The screen flickered. A face appeared. An instant later, a holographic Andalite head appeared in mid-air before us. Force Commander Prince Galuit Enelon Esgaruth. The T.O. said, ATTENTION! No one stood at attention except me. They all had things to do. You don't actually stand at attention if you're doing something. In a calm, thought-speak voice, the holographic head said, The action has begun on the continent. System armed. The cool, thought-speak voice of the computer. Warning, this system is armed. A tall, holographic display shimmered in the middle of the room. It showed me the planet and the ships in nearby space. Yerk ships in red, our ships in blue. There was a lot more red than blue. By focusing my mind, I could see one of the new thought speak displays. It transmits data directly to your brain. Very cutting edge, as Marco would say. So there's quite a lot of bits there, forgive me, but it just goes to show all the different sort of varieties that Andalites use thought speak for. So for instance, uh, when they're transmitting holograms of each other, it uses thought speech speakers. Isn't that right, Lila? To tell what they're saying. Their computer systems are based on thought speak and reply in thought speak. So like the bomb detonation thing would speak to people in thought speech. Ships are powered by thought speech. So when he's boosting the compensators or forming his Hirak de Lest, he makes a transponder, a thought speak transponder link. How that works, I don't freaking know. Again, it's sci-fi. But yeah, every aspect of the computer or, or, or the ships seem to be controlled by ThoughtSpeak. Must be a bit of a mess, honestly. Apparently it's not too advanced though how they do it because Axe is able to take a human system in the alien. We read the quote. I mean, it took him absolute concentration, but he was able to send out a ThoughtSpeak transmission all the way back to the home world using human equipment. So it can't be actually that advanced. Again, it's sci-fi though. 
So who else uses thought speech in their technologies? The Yerks. And the first example of this is Visa 3's holograms. So it's able to take his thought speech and amplify it as normal speech, which is not how the Andalites do it, but it's obviously how the Yerks plan to do it. Let's go read, Lila. I realized why I could hear Visa 3. The hologram projector must not be able to transmit thought speech. It translated it into regular speech. So maybe they're not as advanced as the Andalites in that regard, but you've got to remember that Yerks probably stole a lot of Andalite technology, which would include thought speech stuff. So they've got the technology that you, that's able to translate thought speech into a machine, but they can't then you they don't have then have the technology to thought speech that out so it comes out as normal speech they also on the yerk pool ship have thought speech technology to control their elevators which considering they aren't and lights and don't naturally use thought speech seems particularly silly he said to stop after 15 levels i reminded her yeah and how do i do that think the number it hears speech and understands simple thought speak commands, Axe instructed, then added. At least that's how it works on our ships. I'm slowing down. Cool. Okay, so to be fair, it does say they understand speech and also a bit of thought speech. So that's how the animals are able to use it even when they're in morph. So they've got this, somehow got this technology that can be controlled by thought speech, even though there's only one member of the entire Yerk Empire. Oh no, no, no. No, I t disregard, disregard that last bit. Because uh, thought speech isn't only an Andalite thing, as we're about to get into. There are other races that use thought speech, and some of them, while we're on the topic of technology, developed technology regarding thought speech millions and millions of years ago. Let's look at example for at the Makora and the Nesk. So the Makora, you managed to make thought speak communication devices much like the Andalites did. And then the Nesk found ways to detect thought speech. Take this, Andalite, the Makora co-pilot said. With one of his hands, he gave me a small communicator. A thought speak communicator? Yes, the humans could not use it, but you will be able to. A screaming siren, flashing lights. The robot defense towers blazed with green and blue light. The spacecraft began to power up. The entire base was suddenly very alive, very dangerously alive. A thought speak detector, I cried. They know the Makora used thought speak and they have a thought speak detector. What, are you kidding? Marco demanded. How is that possible? Actually, our own Andalite scientists have been trying for years to develop such a system. It works on the principles of scree, scree. So millions of years ago, you had the Makora using thought speak, and you had the Nesk developing technologies that the Andalites are still not capable of creating. Technology that is able to detect thought speak, detect an emotional telep tele telepathic language somehow. How it does that? I mean, computers are able to obviously able to receive the transmissions. This is something for the end of the video. Um, let's now look at even more alien races that are able to use thought speak, or some version of thought speak. Firstly, Yerks. Does that surprise you? It probably shouldn't. So they're apparently not able to project their thought speech out. But when they wrap around someone's brain, they use their thoughts. And so when Jake becomes a controller, he uses the triangle symbols of thought speak to speak to the Yerk. Don't struggle, Jake, a voice said in my head. It's pointless. A Yerk in my own head. I was a controller. So that's a bit closer to home. Let's look at just a series of quotes showing other examples of different alien races using thought speak. You starting with one that we already know, but just to clarify that it is indeed thought speak, the Makora and then moving on to a series of other alien races that use thought speak too. We are the Makora, one of them said in thought speak. We are immigrants to this planet. Then, to our surprise, we heard a thought speak voice in our heads. Aliens, give us the power source. 
There had been a half dozen Helmicrons in the room around their dead captain. Now many more came rushing in, all jabbering wildly in thought speak. Forgive us, strangers, the leader of this crowd said. His diaphragm whined as he thought spoke a low, grating sound that rose and fell like a bagpipe blown by a man with too little wind. We jetted, contained within our water balloons, and came to a tree. Sure enough, a series of fairly business-like panels were fitted into the trunk. A cheerful thought-speak voice sang out in our heads. Greetings, friends. We are happy to have you aboard. We got away only because the creature had let us, and we listened to the creature speak with Visa 3. Thought-speak, super fast. The words became clear a beat after the creature had stopped speaking. A time delay between sound and meaning. Kind of like when you talk on the phone to someone in Europe. Or any other continent, I guess. The Macora. The uh, Garatrons. The Helmicrons. Even the freaking Pemelites used thoughts. Had the computers designed to use thought speech. Whether that meant them, that they did it themselves, we don't know. But their computers did. And there's one more... Uh, not directly given to an alien race, but there's something that the Elemist made that uses thought speech. The time matrix was surprisingly simple to operate. It could be directed by thought speak command. There were no codes to break, no subtleties to grapple with. So thought speak seems to be a lot wider in usage than we were initially led to believe that it's just this Andalite thing. The Andalites use thought speak and that's just an Andalite thing. We don't meet that many alien races face to face in the series. We certainly don't hear the voices of many alien races in the series. We hear about a lot of aliens, just not as many of them speak to us. But quite a proportion of them use thought speak. And what with the Makora being around millions and millions of years ago, completely unrelated to the Andalites. This appears to have popped up multiple times over, over the course of time in completely different places. The Helmicrons use it as well, this weird alien race there. The Time Matrix, which the Elemist made, this godlike being, utilises thought speak. And um, there's, there's one quote in here that does actually distinguish and like thought speak from all the others. And make, yeah, does make it distinct. But also implies that it is quite widely known across the universe as something that other creatures do. There were three things that made the Andalites inherently formidable as enemies. Their agile intelligence, their ability to shape thought speak to either wideband or private communication, and of course, they're faster than the eye can see tails. There's the distinguishing line and we get it in Visa. Why are the Andalites formidable? One of the reasons is their ability to shape their thought speak to be open or closed. Remember there's what we discussed earlier, they it's like email, they can speak privately to some people or broadcast it. That <coughs> that seems to imply that all these other examples of thought speak don't have that ability. I'd have to look back at in the time of dinosaurs just to make sure that the Makora don't use it privately. But I don't think they do. I don't think they ever do. So that is clearly distinguishing the Andalite style thought speak from other types of thought speak. So this thought speak is it we've we've gone over pretty much everything now and i don't think we've seen anything that contradicts the idea of it being an amplification of emotional states and that probably applies to the thought speak used by other races as well and somehow it has almost a physical presence because computers have to be able to pick it up it has to be able it's, computers need to be able to detect it so unless it's this alien technology whereby it can detect something that doesn't interact with airwaves or anything like that, because remember, it operates over distance. What makes things operate over distance? Basically, when something travels through a material or air or whatever have you, it loses energy as it goes along because that energy is transferred to particles and whatever have you. At least I've remembering physics lessons from about 15 years ago, so just forgive me. So, in space, theoretically, it would travel infinitely until it came to particles and it lost energy that way. 
Um, but when it's when they're on Earth and they're in a thing, it's affected by distance. So like our voices are affected by distance because there's less in the way. Okay, that's why when there's a wall in front of you, there's a lot more particles like bulky right there in front of you. So when you talk at it, it the energy from the voice, the sound waves dispersed more, and the the message from the voice is lost. So this is pretty much all down to speculation at this point, but what I think uh, thought speak is, my roundup of this video, thought speak is emotional states sent out via brain waves that does have some sort of physical interaction with particles in the same way that sound waves do. How it, uh, how it does it, I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's sci-fi at the end of the day, and I've said that a lot, and that really does apply a lot in this video, I think. I think that's the crux of it all. It's sci-fi. I think Gefinland was talking bollocks. Um, the Andalites have created technologies to utilise thought speech in very much the same way that we've utilised technology to advance our own speech. Um, and it's a terribly useful thing, and it's one of the iconic symbols of, of Animorphs. There we go, the, one of the most important symbols of the Animorphs universe. That thing. Yeah, it's, due to, it's down to a lot of speculation. And I hope you join me in the comments to have a discussion about the mysteries of thought speech. I think I've pretty much covered everything. If there's anything you think I could add to this, please do let me know in the comments below. Next time on Analysis, we're looking at Quaffaginovon. That pesky little fellow from book 34. The little Arn, Quaffaginavon. So that should be fun. Tune in for the next analysis when we come to it. And uh, I thank you all very much for watching. See you next time. Ta-ra.